Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Sony's PlayStation 3 is one of the consoles that took the longest to jailbreak. In this video, you're going to find out how Sony stopped the console being hacked for five years completely by accident, and then also completely by accident, made it the target of the entire homebrew community. In order to tell the story, we have to go back to 2006 when Sony announced the price of the PlayStation 3. 599 US dollars, 659 dollars Canadian. To put that in perspective, in 2006 you could pick up the entry level Xbox 360 for 299 and the premium model with a 20 gigabyte hard drive for 399. You could pick up a Wii for $250. However, even at this price, Sony were losing between $250 and $300 per unit. Partly this was because they decided to include a fully functioning Blu-ray player in the console because they wanted it to be the center of your living room and partly because they also put a PlayStation 2 inside each unit for full backward compatibility. In order to get some of this money back, Sony didn't try and remove parts or make the console cheaper to produce. No, they did what a lot of big corporations do. They tried to lower their tax bill. More specifically, their import tax bill when importing the consoles into America and Europe. There are lots of ways companies like Sony try and lower their tax bill. One of those ways is by lowering their import tax bill. Now countries in Europe and America and other countries across the world charge different import rate tariffs depending on the goods you're importing. So for example, Converse, the shoe manufacturer, put a thin layer of felt on the bottom of their shoes so they can be classed as slippers and therefore save 35% on import tariffs. Subaru put carpets and seats in the back of their van so they'll be classed as cars instead of commercial vehicles. And Sony? Well, Sony wanted to convince the courts that the device they were making in the PlayStation 3 was not a games console like the PlayStation 2 was, but was in fact a computer system and therefore would be subject to the lower tax rate of computer systems rather than the higher tax rate of games consoles. So how does a company like Sony go about convincing the European courts and the American courts that the device is in fact different from all the other consoles, it is a computer system? Well, they introduced other OS. A feature that allowed software such as Linux and other operating systems to be booted onto the PS3 from a hard drive or CD. Sony didn't realise it at the time, as all they were trying to do was dodge tax, but giving users the ability to run Linux on their device was genius, because it prevented piracy. What does Linux have to do with stopping piracy on the PlayStation 3? There is the homebrew community which discovers the exploits on a console, and then there are the people that profit from those exploits by selling devices that allow the console to be unlocked fully so that consumers can run unlicensed copies of games. The homebrew group are motivated by the need to unlock consoles because they want to install their own software on it and they want to install Linux on it. And the group on this side are motivated by profits. However, by giving the homebrew community what they want, i.e. by Sony giving the homebrew community the ability to install Linux from the start, they never tried to hack the console. There was no need. So the console was never hacked. To compare it to other consoles of the time, the Wii was hacked after just one month, the Xbox 360 was hacked after 12 months, and yet in 2010, almost four years after the release of the PS3, it hadn't been hacked. However, Sony are Sony, and in March 2010, they decided to remove Linux from PS3 devices, citing security concerns. They didn't realize at the time, the only reason their device was secure was because of Linux. And as you would expect, once you're a target of the homebrew community, your device won't last long. The PS3 lasted 12 months before we had the PS jailbreak USB stick. This device and all of the many clones of this device use a clever USB exploit to hack the system and allows users to play unlicensed, downloaded copies of games from an external hard drive. It was, in my opinion, removing Linux that caused the PlayStation 3 to get targeted. Once targeted, it took the same amount of time as the Xbox 360 to be hacked, 12 months. But Sony's problems didn't end there. By removing the ability to play Linux, Sony had removed a key selling point of the PS3. Buyers then saw this as false advertisement, a breach of contract, and Sony were taken to court in a clash action lawsuit. In 2016, they were ordered to pay $65 to everyone who had bought an original PS3 and wanted to install Linux on it. What do you guys think? Were Sony stupid to remove Linux from the console? Is that the real reason the console was never hacked? Let me know down below. Want to see more videos like this where I talk about console security, jailbreaking? Hit the subscribe button. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and I'll see you guys in the next one.